Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. It's time for a mobile call. So I've been on the new job for a week and it's been fantastic. Uh, I'll give you more details later, I guess, but you know, fantastic company, great people, a uh, lot of exciting things. But on the weekend, you know, why not do a mobile call? I got a call about a 2006 Lexus GS 300 that has some fuel pressure codes and it basically stalls out when it gets warm. So I think it should be an interesting diagnosis. It's a direct injected engine. Um, yeah, so it could be anything. Low pressure pump, high pressure pump. So we'll uh, get to the site and see if we can figure this thing out. And hopefully I can make at least one video a week to uh, you know keep the channel going here. So let's go. All right, we're inside the car. It's a 2006 Lexus GS 300, 163,000 miles. Here are the trouble codes. Uh, 0087, fuel rail system pressure too low. 192, fuel rail pressure sensor circuit low input. Engine immobilizer system. All right, we have that. Uh, what I wanna do right now is look at the freeze frame. And that for that, we have to go to generic functions freeze frame I want to see when this thing acted up what were hopefully it'll show us the actual fuel pressures you know when this thing was acting up Let's see if we can get those I think it you know the guy said it runs okay when it's cold you can drive it and then it just loses power eventually stalls out now let's see what kind of data we have in the freeze frame. So for the P0087, here's what we had. So the engine was dying, <laughs> 396 RPM. Closed loop, 60 degrees air intake. What was the coolant temp here? Do we have a coolant temp? I don't see it there. See the throttle position, fuel system, ambient air, 51 degrees, engine coolant temp 180, so it was fully warmed up. You can see short term is minus 20, but again, if the engine was dying, then some of this data is not that helpful. And it occurred nine miles after clearing the DTCs. But I don't see any data pit of what the fuel pressure was when when this happened so okay no big deal we'll just look at the live data right now from a cold start uh, air fuel O2 sensor data uh, it's probably under engine data it's kind of a key parameter for a direct injected vehicle desired and actual fuel pressure so let's do custom display so we want rpms do coolant math uh, throttle position percent vacuum pump purge fuel pump speed Anything has to do with fuel pump. Injection volume, sure. Air fuel ratio. Long term, short term. I guess we'll do one of those. Oil pressure, come on. Where is. short term just focus on bank one for now I'm sure it affects the whole engine <clears throat> hmm let's look at other data lists and see if we can find this fuel pressure data pid that's what I'm really after Not seeing it there. Oh, 
where else could it be? VVT CAT EVAP electronic throttle control system. Let's monitor. No, oh, this is just the uh, emission stuff. We don't care about that. I can't believe it wouldn't give you a fuel pressure data pad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not seeing it. All right, let's go back to engine data. Engine speed. Oh, his seat heater's on. Probably draining his battery. Oh, seat heat and cooling. How fancy. All right. I'm like, oh, it's feeling kind of warm because outside right now it's like 20 degrees and dropping really fast. <laughs> Yesterday it was like a monsoon. It was almost 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And now it's back to winter. Well, I think that's all we have. I don't know what FC, idle FC TAU. All right, let's start this thing up. How do you start it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what does it say? Check. Completed. Foot in the brake. Hood open. What, it won't start with the hood open? Come on. <laughs> Guys, I don't know how to start this car. <laughs> it's a no crank. Um, that's ridiculous. Well, let me figure that out first. All right, so <laughs> no start, no crank. I had to connect the jump pack. Now it cranks, however, it still doesn't start. So let's try again. Interesting. Alrighty. And the fuel pump data pit here. It was on for a while. Fuel pump speed control. Let's see if this fuel pump is actually coming on. Let's see. Exit out of here. Oh boy. Let's see if there's a bi-directional control here. Functional tests. No fuel pump on off. Okay. Let's see on. I can hear it. Off. And we have half a tank of fuel according to the fuel gauge. Battery voltage 10.7. Hmm. Exit. Try again. Nothing, huh? Alrighty, so we have a crank no start. Fuel, spark. Well, <laughs> I wish we had a fuel pressure data pit. Uh, I'm gonna have to look for one, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, I hooked up the Autel just because the Snap-on was not giving me a fuel pressure data pid, and our battery voltage is dropping, and our scanner is off. Oh man, working in the cold sucks. 
Well, sometimes you gotta get the real jumper cables out. All right, now we have a nice bright screen on the scanner. <laughs> Let's see the codes. 0087, 0192, and we have a 335 and a 340 camshaft position sensor circuit, crankshaft position sensor circuit. Oh, what else? Everything. Holy mackerel. Okay, so. Yes, erase that. Okay. Let's see if we can find a data pit for this fuel rail pressure sensor. All data. It has to be there. All right, let's see, page down. Don't see it there, page down. Don't see it there. There's a lot of data here. Here we go. Fuel pressure, 11.6 PSI. That was not in there. What the heck, Snap-on? I'm gonna shut you off. This is ridiculous. So this is a $10,000 tool. This is a $1,000 tool, and we have more data here. I've seen this before. I'm sure we'll see it again. Even though I love my Varus, but come on. Such a key parameter, they don't show it. Disappointed, but let's focus on this. Fuel pressure, 174, 203 PSI. Let's crank it, see, see what happens. 500, 300. Okay, it like totally ran out of juice. You can see the screen flickering. Down to 43 PSI. Okay, interesting. Let's see what other data pits we have here. This battery's shot. Now it's 13.3 since I have it hooked up to the XL7 over there that's running. Yeah, there's a whole lot more data here. Crazy. There's fuel pump control, fuel pump speed. All right, escape. Let's do custom list. We just want fuel pressure, <laughs> and then fuel pump. It goes all the way at the bottom there. Speed control, fuel pump, speed status, okay. Let's graph that. So there's the fuel pump PSI. So let's crank it one more time. We'll probably start dying out. Okay, how did it jump to 225, 290, 174? Okay, that, I don't like that data at all right now you see what's happening fuel pumps off what is going on with this fuel pump pressure sensor 170 it's all over the place let's do a visual inspection and see if we can find this fuel pressure PID and uh, See what this data is all about. This is nuts. Woo, it's getting cold. All right, here's a layout. This is the engine bay. Here's the fuel feed line. Comes up here, right here to this hose. That comes over to our, this is the high pressure pump. It's driven off of the camshaft. And then you can see there's a you know, hard steel line coming off the back and then it looks like, uh, I think, on the fuel rail, there's a three-wire connector 
Oh man, I can't even barely see it. It's right, right there, that blue one. Three wires. I think that's the fuel rail pressure sensor. Now, we have to, I just want to unplug it and see if our data goes to zero. But man, that is a sucker to get to. All right, I'm gonna to try to do this off camera, guys. All right, guys, I looked up the code description and criteria for P0192 fuel rail pressure sensor circuit low input, and the way that data pit was jumping up and down, I do suspect something's wrong with this pressure sensor because if we had no pressure, then, you know, we can that as it jump around and just stay low. This thing's going up and down. So, just read the description right there. Uh, let's get inside the car, see what's clear out here. All right. Fuel. Okay, for 192, the DTC detection condition is short and fuel pressure sensor circuit for five seconds or more. And there's this trouble area. Short and fuel pressure sensor, fuel pressure sensor, or ECM. So this code won't just happen if you have no fuel pressure. It's an actual circuit or a plausibility code and let's see here <clears throat> sensor changes fuel pressure to electrical signal with a transducer and the target is oh let's see here 580 to 1800 psi if the sensor output stops, the ECM will stop the high pressure side fuel pump and supply fuel using the low pressure side fuel pump well, isn't that interesting? So, if the sensor, this sensor is key, it won't just be like, oh, we don't know what the fuel pressure is, let's set it at some default. It actually stops using the high pressure pump, and that would explain the current no start because, you know, apparently this low pressure pump is not enough, especially in this cold, to give this thing enough fuel, which, you know, makes sense. It controls the feedback of the pump discharge in order to keep the fuel pressure at target pressure. Yeah, okay. So, these DTCs are set if the fuel pressure sensor output voltage is out of the standard range, and they stand for an open or short malfunction of the sensor circuit. So we have to check this sensor. I want to simply unplug it and just see if the scanner goes to zero, and that will basically verify that the uh, at least the signal wire is good. Then we'll have to check the you know five volt reference and ground. Uh, let me see, we don't need all this stuff. I had a nice graph here of this, the signal voltage versus there we go versus the actual fuel pump pressure. There should be nice linear response. So now we have to see where this thing lives. So in the service and repair for this fuel rail pressure sensor, they don't give a labor time, but this is pretty involved. <laughs> Remove anything, drain the coolant, blah, blah, blah. It looks pretty, uh, disconnect the fuel pipe, remove the fuel pressure sensor. You gotta disconnect your water inlet outlet hose, remove engine cover. I don't know if you have to remove the whole intake or not, but there it is. It's on the back of the engine. Oh, let's see here. There should be a connector right there. Let's connect the connector and clamp. Remove the fuel pressure sensor and gasket. And install the sensor. Torque it. Install it. So that connector, it looks like it should be by this... I think it's a coolant hose. If we can find this guy, it should be golden. Just don't want to go out there, it's so cold. Keith, I don't see how you work in this weather, man. It is brutal. If you have to do 20 cars, you know, in a row, when it's like, you know, cold outside. <laughs> I don't know how, how your hands uh, don't freeze. You guess you have to work really fast, huh? So let's try to find that connector and do some voltage checks or unplug it. Alright guys, I unplugged 
that fuel rail pressure sensor. It was a pain to get to. But I'll show you the, the connector and look at this. Our fuel pressure PSI went to 3,193 PSI, which should be, you know, 5 volts. So all we have to do now is verify wiring integrity to that connector. Three wires. If we want 5 volt reference. We know the signal wire is good since we unplugged it and it went high. And then the ground. And then, then we can call the sensor. And that will be it. So let's get the voltmeter out and just do these simple checks. Alright, we just got the trusty voltmeter hooked up. Let's set you guys up on the tripod. So three wires here, the connector is way, way in the back, I can barely reach it, but all we need is make good contact. So you guys can see that right there. We got five volts on one wire. There, that's better. The next one, middle wire. We got 4.9, steady. Last wire, should be a ground, 38 millivolts, no, that's not a good check, we should check it with a loaded circuit, make sure that stays low when we uh, hook up a little test light. Alright, test light connected to battery positive, make sure it works, and now all we want to do is touch it on the voltmeter pin. Make sure it lights up and then the voltage doesn't go up go up too high. So that's still at 36 millivolts. I'll touch it real quick. Uh come on. Can do it. Where is it? 36 millivolts. Let's see, make sure the test light works. Well, it doesn't work when it's not connected. There we go. I bumped it with my elbow. Yep, that's a good ground. Only 82 millivolts. Test light's lit. So final diagnosis is the uh, fuel rail pressure sensor is malfunctioning and needs to be replaced now i gotta give the customer a quote to do that and but that's it for the diagnosis so thanks for watching stay warm see you guys next time bye bye okay so i plugged the sensor back in let's get out of here reset the codes <sighs> Read codes first. No codes, okay. Escape. I fixed it! No, no, on, on the part. <laughs> yeah, what's the part? Yeah. It well, unplugging that sensor and plugging it back in, the car starts, okay? So let's go back to our custom list for fuel pressure. Fuel pressure. All right. There you go, 1900 PSI. And it's pretty steady. You can watch the graph. Rev it up a little bit. The sensor seems to be working right now. Now when I initially unplugged it, it seemed too easy to unplug. Like almost like it was only plugged halfway in. So in this case, I'm going to say, let me do a little wiggle test on it. Tell the customer, drive it for a little bit. If it starts acting up, you'll need the sensor. If it doesn't, then for some reason it was plugged in uh, kind of wonky. So we'll run for a little bit, let it warm up. 
and then you know see where it goes all right well we're back at the shop after the diagnosis on the Lexus and well it was uh, kind of open-ended right we plugged the sensor back in and the car started up the customer drove it to my shop because you know while it's still running might as well get it to the shop and then replace the sensor here and it ran perfect no code set you know great power everything seems to be perfect I just took it for a test drive again monitor the fuel pressure data beautiful no dropouts no anything so right now I'm thinking that that actual connector on the pigtail uh, was wasn't plugged in all the way it wasn't clipped in because when I found it with my hand it just it kind of came apart I didn't have to press the tab and you know fight it so I think that's the whole problem here it was the for some reason that connector was partially unplugged and it was you know making a breaking contact and eventually just caused the caused the whole issue so in this case uh, I want your opinion what would you do if you were a shop owner would you still recommend replacing the sensor because this is you know the prices here I'll look up but the customer already has a part it is a genuine Denso part he just wants me to put it in and you know the labor time wasn't clear but it says drain the coolant take apart like the top whatever coolant pipes so I quoted him 200 bucks on that and you know he's willing to do it however if the only problem is that loose connector should I still replace the sensor I say no uh, what we're gonna do is it's gonna sit overnight outside gonna cool down if this fires right up in the morning and it drives perfect for like you know 10 miles warm it up all the way then I'm gonna give the car back to the customer and tell them that's it you know just a diag fee uh, no parts or labor required I think that's the most fair thing to do because right now the car runs beautiful so um, I guess tomorrow morning we'll do a final shot of how it runs and that's it so hopefully this thing is fixed and uh, I don't know I guess he got off pretty easy <laughs> alright guys uh, thanks for watching we'll see you in the morning well it's the next morning we had a deep freeze overnight it got down to about two degrees uh, Fahrenheit which is like minus 17 C so <clears throat> the Lexus is well chilled and we're gonna take it on a test drive we'll see if it starts right up we'll monitor the fuel pressure and take it on a you know extended like at least 10 miles warm it up all the way and see if uh, if we have any issues I don't think we will but this <laughs> is gorgeous today cold but quiet and 100% sunny so let's plug in the Autel crank this bad boy up take it for a spin oh man I hate leather seats in the winter even if they're heated they're just not cozy <laughs> all right let's uh, see if we can this thing will fire up camera on this wires look really stiff <laughs> The boot time on the Autel is actually very impressive compared to uh, some fancier tools. And I can't believe that this thing displays more data than the Snap-on. And I've had that happen multiple times. And, well, that just proves that there's no one perfect scan tool. You, you need to have several options. If one doesn't work, just try another one. I think Eric O and Keith would definitely agree that one scanner does not cut it. All right, let's see. Read codes. All right, system passed. No fault codes detected. Good. Live data. We just want to look at fuel pressure. See what it is right now when the car is off. Hopefully the battery 
is good because they really ran it down when they're cranking it. Before, see fuel pressure. Okay. Graph that. I wish I could change the time scale there, but I've right, got 36 psi. Here we go. Sweet. Cranked right up. Fuel pressure is steady, almost 2,000 psi. And it cranked healthy, so I guess he doesn't need a new battery. He charged up yesterday when he was driving it over here. Um, honestly, at this point, I think the car is fixed. That's my honest opinion because you know we saw all the evidence that before it was crank no start, plug the sensor in all the way, boom, no more codes, runs perfect. I talked to the customer yesterday and he was really concerned. He was like, well, is it going to be reliable? Because this has been an intermittent ongoing problem and you know he takes it to New York City and you know all over the place and he had, you know with his family and obviously he wants it to be reliable. So that put me in the spot of trying to convince him that the car is fixed without replacing any parts. And how often does that happen? <laughs> I mean, people are not used to that. They're like, well, obviously it's broken. You got to replace something. And he wanted me to replace the sensor. But at this point, that would be the wrong thing to do because you start replacing parts. This sensor costs three hundred dollars, oh, and you know from the dealer plus a little markup, whatever. Uh, labor to install it, I quoted him two hundred. That's five hundred dollars easy on something you don't need, which he should probably put to you know invest in new tires before doing this. And then you know I did research online. There's no reported failures of these sensors on the Lexus model, so not even not even gonna go there and I'll give him a guarantee I'll say if it acts up in the next two months you know, with the same codes I'll waive the labor fee I'll install the sensor for free obviously he'll, he'll have to buy it but that is how confident I am in my diagnosis and hopefully that'll make him feel more confident and uh, you know this will be the final fix so let's take it for a spin and you know I'm I'm pretty confident that this car is fixed. So we've gone about 10 miles. Car is driving absolutely perfect. No uh, glitches in the fuel pressure at all. It's happy. Can't even feel the speed. <laughs> Just like a Lexus. Definitely didn't get much snow this winter. I don't think we're gonna get much more after uh, after this. Well, that's it. Test drive went perfect. Back to shop, no issues. I feel 100% confident. Handing this customer or, uh, car back to the customer, and you know, giving them, giving him the guarantee that if this problem resurfaces, and I'm pretty sure it won't. We plugged that connector and it clicked. <laughs> um, you know, we'll, we'll take take care of it. So you have to make the cu customer trust you and be 100% confident that your repair is exactly what the car needs. You know, they might have their doubts, but sometimes the hard part is convincing them that what you did is right. So with that, I want to say thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.